very special day. Brother Jesse's going to be in the house preaching the Word of God. We're excited about that. Also, this is Communion Sunday, so later on in the, after the worship, we'll be participating in that. So those of you that are watching online can be a part of it as well. Let's open up with the scriptures. This is Psalms 1, excuse me, Psalm 18, verse 1, 2, and 3. Y'all can look, follow it along on the screen. It says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Come on. He's worthy to be praised today. Come on, let's lift him up. These altars are ready for y'all to praise the Lord. Go ahead. Be a bitch right now. Be a bitch right now. 
more worthy of it all, God. Of our attention, our devotion, our obedience, Lord. Our worship, you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. opportunity as a congregation to share in Holy Communion. We love to do this. We do it probably every first Sunday of every month. Occasionally we don't, but today we're going to do that. Those of you that are watching online can join us in this. It's a very special time in the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So she's talking about they're celebrating their anniversary and birthdays, and God has been good to them. So give the Lord a, bless, a praise this morning. Hallelujah. God is so good. We have an opportunity to share together in the communion. And we're going to read today from Matthew chapter 26. I want us to read it together before we partake. Amen. God is so good. We love to put the word first place. And if you have not received your elements, please raise your hand. The ushers and the connect teams in the, in the aisles ready to help you. Lift your hands up high if you have not 
received your element. We pass these out before the service begins, but sometimes a few of you may slip through and not get your elements. Is everybody ready to partake? Let's pull back the first, hallelujah, first film and, and get the bread out, the representation of the body of Jesus. Hallelujah. Matthew 26, this is during the Last Supper before he went to the cross, of course. It says, for, uh, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Let's eat together. Father, we thank you for this. We receive this together as a congregation. Lord, we call it holy and precious. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. I thank you for your body that was broken on the cross for us. And because of the light, Lord, we can be receive our healing, our restoration, everything that's necessary, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your body. Hallelujah. Continue reading verse 27. It says, And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let's peel back that second layer if you haven't done that already. Partake of this, representing the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, removes sin and all the curse of sin from our life today. Lord, we remember this. We do it all in remembrance of you and all that you did. We honor you, Lord, today. Bless us as we partake as a congregation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the cleansing power of your blood. Hallelujah. Verse 29 goes on to say, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out unto the Mount of Olives. We're going to sing a hymn today, continue worshiping the Lord, because this, we realize it. Not only remembering what he did, we're remembering what he will do. He's coming back again, amen? And he's going to receive us unto himself, and we're going to partake together of that marriage supper of the Lamb one day. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. Let's lift it up to him.
first time. Can I see on this side? If you're visiting for the first time, raise your hand. Great, thank you so much. Could you tell me where you're visiting from, please? Tennessee, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Welcome, thanks for being here. How about in this section, anybody? Yes, yes, couple where you're from? Texas, welcome, give them a great hand clap. Anybody else that I miss on this side? Yes, sir, how are you from? North Carolina, yes. And how about in this section, I think we may have someone, yes, welcome, where are you from in the middle? Lake Charles, Louisiana. And yes, ma'am, where are you from? Norway, yes, she was here Wednesday night, welcome back. I got to talk with her on Wednesday night and pray with her for her family. In this section, yes, in the back? Dallas, Texas. And right here on the front row, would y'all please stand up, Pastor San, uh, uh, Stephen and Candy LaFlora from Chicago, Illinois. Y'all may recognize them from the Kenneth Copeland, uh, the Victory Channel. They have a, their church has a program on that weekly now, I believe. And also she sings at the KCM conferences. I've asked her if she would sing a song for us today. She'll be doing that after the announcements. So excited about that. He's gonna be playing the White Bulsendorfer and uh, they'll be able to bless us with the song. Well, it's not prepared and I just hope I didn't spring it on her, but so it's, such a, it's a shame to pass up such a gift that's in the house. They've been in the area in the Baton Rouge area doing meetings this weekend, so they just came in to have church, but we're gonna draw upon that gift this morning and receive from the Lord. Of course, Brother Jesse's in the house. He'll be preaching. And also on this section, can I see a hand of people visiting? Welcome, welcome, where are you from, sir? Corpus Christi, Texas, yes. The Rodriguez family, yes, family everywhere. <laughs> but anybody else and am I missing? Well, thanks everybody for being here today. Maybe you're watching online and you're visiting for me for the first time. We wanna know whether you're first time or one of our regulars, please let us know where you're watching from and comment because we always love seeing what God is doing, how he's reaching people all over the world, amen? Well, we have some great, oh, one thing I want to say, last Sunday when I was here, I neglected and just an oversight, it was in my notes, but I forgot to mention and thank all those that went out soul winning. Would y'all stand up if y'all were part of the soul winning team this last August, just a couple of weekends ago. Give them a great hand clap. So many people were reached. They send me the pictures and the testimony. I don't know if the pictures are probably still not available. They were ready last Sunday and I forgot. But they do, a, and especially in that heat, they went out and uh, they ministered to people, led people to the Lord, and just shared the love of Jesus to our community. They went out to another city. All this time we've been doing it for like at least six or seven months, haven't we? And, but we've been going in Destrehan, and this was the first uh, time that we went outside of Destrehan to a little surrounding town called St. Rose, hallelujah. So we're calling in all the areas around here to come to the knowledge of Jesus, and we're, we're thankful for the team that went out representing the Lord in such a wonderful, loving way. Thank y'all so much. Pastor Ron leads that, and we appreciate it so very much. We have some great announcements. Would you watch the screens? And then after that, Pastor Stephen and Candy will bless us. Amen. Welcome to Covenant Church. It's such a blessing to have you here to worship Jesus with us in unity. Here at Covenant Church, we have a variety of wonderful ways that you can stay connected so that your faith can soar. If you're visiting today and haven't filled out a Covenant Church Connect card that is found in the back of your pew, please do so now and place it in the offering when it's received or bring it to the Welcome Center after service. Join us for our Next Steps class today, immediately after service in the prayer room. These classes will take place every first Sunday of the month. If you're new to Covenant Church, we encourage you to come and learn about our church history, beliefs, and vision. Our next child dedication will take place Sunday, September 10th during service. If you regularly attend Covenant Church and would like to dedicate your child, please sign up at the Welcome Center. Be a part of our next Soul Winning Outreach on Saturday, September 23rd. Teams will meet at 10 a.m. in the Annex before heading out into our community to proclaim the good news of Jesus. Parents, bring your children to Covenant Kids in the East Wing for exciting, age-appropriate Bible lessons with Pastor Melissa and our Covenant Kids leaders. 
The fun begins every Sunday at 10 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. for children three months to fifth grade. Join us for our Wednesday night services as Pastor Kathy begins her new series, The Book of Ephesians. Services begin at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. If you're in middle school or high school, make plans to join Pastor Saudi and the United Youth Leaders on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Service takes place in the Annex. Let's gather together for intercessory prayer in the prayer room on Wednesday nights before service at 6.30 p.m. and on Sunday mornings before service at 9 to 9.45 a.m. Follow us on our Covenant Church social media platforms. There you will find new content posted daily that will help you keep the faith. And visit our website at jdm.org to find out more about how JDM is reaching people and changing lives one soul at a time. It's His goodness and mercy that does the work. His power, His anointing. Nancy Dufresne is coming to Covenant Church Sunday, September 24th. Your faith opens the door for Him to work. And His goodness can work for you what you never could have done for your life in a million years. Amen. Nancy Dufresne, Sunday, September 24th, 10 a.m. at Covenant Church. Jesus said He could change a nation in a day. We can preach to the world today. 7.8 billion people in seven minutes. The time has come. We have a job to do, a vision to fulfill. We're believing God for the unbelievable, the impossible, simply because it's doable. He said, now, the uttermost parts of the world are yours. Go. Every little thing that I can give him opportunity to expand, I will. He's looking for people that are bold enough to step up and say, yes, Lord, here I am. Use me. Come on. Hallelujah. The only Jesus some people may ever see is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. Now, let's show the world who he really is. to do for not for 47 years now reaching people changing lives one soul at a time amen? amen well we're so happy to have pastors Stephen and Candy would y'all please go to the platform give them a great hand of applause let them know how much you are thankful they're here gonna share the gift whatever the Lord puts on her heart this morning and then brother Jesse will be here to speak God bless you Glory to God. It is such a joy and an honor to be here. This is our first time visiting here at Covenant Church with Pastor Kathy and Dr. Duplantis. We are so blessed to be here to honor God and to lift up his name. Can you lift your hands with me? I always like to lift my hands in the presence of the Lord and magnify him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. Let your glory fill this house. Let your praises fill our mouths. Let each vessel offer on to you a sacrifice of praise. Your glory fill this house and let your praises fill our mouths. Let each vessel offer unto you a sacrifice of praise. Oh, 
Hand clap, Stephen. Hallelujah. 
Come on, you can do better than that, Abby. <laughs> what a blessing of the Lord. We found out that they were visiting today from uh, coming in. And uh, anyway, to make a long story short, I've been working a long time with Candy uh, at the Southwest Believers Conventions and things of that nature. And, uh, and I like that name, Candy. She's got a sweet voice. <laughs> you may be seated. Thank you. What a blessing of the Lord. I tell you, I enjoy that. Yeah. God has been faithful. In fact, it's, that song is going to go along with my, uh, uh, the sermon that I'm going to talk about today. I, um, not, uh, was, it a, was it this week? I've been traveling so much. Um, uh, you know, I get kind of turned around. I'm in New Orleans. And I, I, I think so. Yeah. I think I, thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm about ready to go to Bogota, Colombia. Me and Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Savelle and Keith Moore. And I don't know who else is all going, but um, y'all be praying for us. Hallelujah. We're going to the drug capital of the world right there, buddy. You know, the cocaine capital of the world right there. And we're just going to get people saved, born again, touched, and blessed. Because God's been so good and gracious to us. And uh, we just thank the Lord. And um, I remember when uh, that Brother Copeland and I asked Candy to first come and sing. And, and now, it, let, let you know, her and Stephen have been given a program on the Victory Network. And if you've got DirecTV, that's 366. And you need to watch them. And it's just a blessing of the Lord. Give her another hand clap. And Stephen, too. What a blessing of God. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Thank all of you that are watching today for tuning in online. Jesus has been so good and gracious, and we thank you that you took time out of your busy schedule to come and be with us and minister with us today and, and everything. And, you know, today uh, I am celebrating. I was born again on Labor Day weekend, 1974, 49 years last night. 49 years. And I came to the knowledge of Jesus, and, uh, and he has been faithful to me all those years, and it's truly been a great blessing of the Lord. How many people brought your Bibles or your iPads or your telephones or whatever you use? Uh, I want you to turn with me today to the book of Isaiah, or if you're in Europe, Isaiah, however you want to say it, uh, chapter 65. I spoke this in, uh, at, to my staff, oh, I guess last week or something, and they said, boy, you ought to do that at Covenant Church, and I wasn't going to do it. I said, no, I'm taking them. I need some time off. And, you know, but Kathy kept looking at me with that eyebrow raised up real high, you know. And she said, I don't put pressure on you, but you'll go to hell if you don't preach Sunday. No, no, I, I know she didn't say that. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And everything. So I said, okay, here we go. And God is so good. What I love about the Lord and people don't understand if they think of him as this great, terrible God. You know, and, and in the old covenant, you could not approach him. You couldn't. You had to use the blood of an of a animal. And, and especially in the covenant, because only the high priest could go in the Ark of the Covenant or in that area, the Holies of Holies, once a year. You better have that blood sprinkled or you're going to die. But, you know, God had already set things up to be a blessing, to be a father in his family. That's why Jesus said, I came that you might know the father. Yet in that process of knowing the Father, Jesus shed his wonderful blood so that we could come boldly to the throne of grace and become sons and daughters, not servants. We're sons and daughters that serve, made in the express image of God and his likeness. So you ought to act like God, talk like God, smell like God, and be like God. Now, when I say those things, I get all kind of criticism. They say, who do you think he is, God? No, but I am his child. And it's just such a blessing of the Lord. And there's one verse of scripture I want to get to. And the title of this message is, God is looking at you so he can bless you. Always looking to be a blessing and not a curse. He's not looking for judgment. If, if there would not have been for sin, God would have never had a serious thought. We were put in the Garden of Eden just to bless him. And he'd walk in the cool of the day with us. My God, wouldn't that be wonderful? And yet, but man sinned. But I love, what I love about God, he loves us so much. That's John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Watch this. When Adam and Eve was put out of the garden, you know what God did? He said, well, if they're not going to be in this garden, I'm not, I'm not neither. So he went out with them. You see, he took the garden up to heaven, and he went out with them and on the earth to watch over his creation. That's pretty nice, huh? And you really think about that. But I want to read the scripture, and I'll read it in the King James. It's Isaiah chapter 65, and it's verse um, 24. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass that before they call, the word call there means ask. And it shall come to pass that before they call or ask, I will answer. 
And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. You got to understand something. God never misses what you say. So you could read it in this translation. It shall come to pass that before they ask, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. People have asked me all my life, why have you been so blessed? Because God, before I can think, before I can ask, he's already doing something for me. He's already planned great and wonderful concepts and ideas and insights for me and for you that are born again. Why would you want to serve Jesus Christ? Buddha's never done that. And I'm not against Buddha or Muhammad either, but Jesus, before you even ask, I will answer. Don't tell me that prosperity is not for today when God is looking to be a blessing to you. Because when he created Adam and Eve, he didn't put them in the slums. He put them in a beautiful place. Didn't even have to cut the grass, just speak to the grass and the grass would cut itself. Think about that, Lord Jesus. Man, what a blessing of God to be. And you know, God loves gardens, and he brought that garden back up there. So we're going to walk in the Garden of Eden, all of us. How many of y'all born again? You're going to walk in the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve walked before the fall, where God came to speak to his holy creation. So think about this. So write this down if you're taking notes, and I want to do a little teaching. God anticipates our necessities, providing wants, in sunshine and rain before we ever needed coal, it was in the ground. Before we ever needed oil, it was in the ground. Before we ever needed gas, natural gas, it was in the ground. Before we ever needed gold, it was in the ground and on top of the ground. God put fine gold on top of the ground because he knew Eve was going to make some jewelry. <laughs> Women like jewelry. Ain't nothing wrong with that. He, next, before they asked, before they could ever want it, he provided it. He put food in the ground before you got hungry and made saw uh, just, just germinate seed to, before you could even ask. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. It's all been set up and planned for all of us. And it's not only done in the, in the physical financial realm, but it's done in the spirit. Let me say it again. God anticipates our necessities, providing wants in sunshine and rain. It don't make no difference what it is. Cold gas, gold in the ground waiting for you to receive it. This ring was given to me, where was I? South Africa. And it, 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 it's, a really, it's a really unique ring. It's only two of them made in the world like this. And, uh, and it, it, it's a picture of Jesus Christ, see? And I was walking down the hallway there in, in, um, in, in South Africa. And this man said, oh, I've been wanting to do this for you. And I said, no, 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 I, I, I'm doing fine. See, before I could even ask, in fact, I didn't ask. God made this for me. So don't get mad at me if I wear it. What are you mad at me for? See, God, before, I didn't ask for a ring. I didn't ask for nothing. But the Lord already had caused a jeweler to create something that it would be given to me. Do you see that? So when you understand, he anticipates, how can I bless my kids today? What will he do for you today? Spiritual, physical, and financial. What? Ain't no telling what he's got in mind if you're just willing to receive it. Looking for some. One of my kids I can bless. Jody and my daughter, I mean, I only have one daughter, one granddaughter, and I just enjoy blessing them. I said, Jody, you need some cash? You got the cash? You need some cash? You know, I, I asked Kathy all the time, Kathy, you got a cash? You know, you know, Kathy said, I don't give her a lot of credit, but I give her a lot of cash. She said, forget the credit. Just put the cash in the envelope. That's right. That's fine. And I said, okay. <laughs> Why? I like doing it. But it's not her birthday, but it was just a while. You know, Kathy made 71 years old uh, a couple of days ago. Give her a hand clap. Isn't that a blessing? She don't look it, does it? And I look my age, but she don't look her age. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm the one that produces the cash. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> they call me the golden goose. Somebody gave me a pair of golden goose, <laughs> goose shoes. I got some uh, Richie and Tammy and, and, and Greg and Carrie gave me some golden goose. They call me the golden goose behind my back. Don't kill the golden goose. <laughs> and I thought, the golden goose, you know. So I, they found out they had some shoes made like that. So I had some. So when I walked in, they, they gave me the wrong size. I went and get them. I, so I went and uh, I had to exchange them and everything. And I said, uh, and they said, oh, you're the golden goose. I prefer to be called the golden eagle. A lady heard it and painted a picture of me, not of me personally, of a golden eagle. And she said, you are the golden eagle. I said, two of us agree, girl, you, me and you. Let's kill the goose and stick with the eagle. 
You don't eat eagles. You eat gooses, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God anticipates our necessities. Providing wants and sunshine or rain, no matter what the world's doing. Write this down. God will always do the maximum and not the minimum. Always the maximum. Oh, Jerry Swift has been preaching on maximum result. Always the maximum, not the minimum. Why? Because he's, he's a God more than enough. See, the problem with you, most people, they're always dealing with to God, talking to God about needs, and what a waste of spiritual energy. Kathy used to get so mad at me. Jesse, you never ask God for a need. I never will. It's a waste of spiritual energy when he said he'll supply how many need? How many need? Oh, let me get black with it. How many need, Lord? How many? What are you asking him for a need for? Why? Why don't you tell him what you want? Now you go, oh, what? The Lord's my shepherd. Is the Lord your shepherd? Is the Lord your shepherd? You shall not want. Want. Well, that's greed. No, that's growth. When you, you've heard me say it thousands of times. I'll say it again. When you have what you want, you don't even think about need. Right? When you got what you want, need don't even come in your mind. That's why he said, before you ask, I will answer. That's need, that's desire, that's want. When are we going to believe this? When? How long is it going to take? Another millennium? Uh, I don't know. My God, you see, God always do, do, does the maximum, and not the minimum. I like to be a blessing over and above and beyond. I'll usually tip more than my, my dinner. Why? Why not? Those people got to make a living. Especially if they're a good waitress or waiter. Why not be a blessing? Or a good bellman? Oh, yeah, and people remember me. Sometimes I don't go back for five years, and they go, where were you? <laughs> Why? Because I, I believe in maximum results. You see what I'm saying? I got it from God. Don't get mad at me. It ain't my fault. That's Deuteronomy 8.18. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Do you remember him? For it is he that giveth thee power to get what? 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 You people that criticize people wealthy. Did you hear that? He gives you power to get what? Yeah. Shout it. Yeah. His will be done where? As it is where? Yeah. Is heaven wealthy? Yeah. How come you're not wealthy? Because the church won't let you. They will criticize you. When God is saying, forget them fools. And live like I tell you to live. Walk like I tell you to walk. Talk like I tell you to talk. Be what I tell you to be. They'll criticize you because they criticize me. This El Shaddai God. God will always do the maximum and not the minimum. I really like this next point. Before you ask means God has a message to deliver. Before you ask, the delivery is already coming. Ladies and gentlemen, and some of you may not, maybe Kathy's told you something. Uh, my dream has now come to pass. I've been believing a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, I now own a Falcon 7X. It's mine. Or if you go on TikTok, they're eating my lunch. TikTok, talk your tick. I don't care. It don't make a lick of difference. Something I'm believing God for. I've been believing for a long time. Why? Because I, I'm the only one in New Orleans in 45 years that has wholesale, wholesale jet fuel. So I can fly halfway around the world on wholesale fuel. You know how much money I'll save right there? About $150,000. I get it for like $2, two, two for $89, $3, or whatever it is, or $3 a gallon. You, I, we was in Copenhagen, Kent, and some is $9, $12 a gallon. So think about that. It's not that I wanted something bigger, something bad. No, but I, I'm, I'm a good businessman, see. So the Lord's been good. Well, I heard you have a Falcon 900 too. Yes. You mean you got two jets? You got two cars? You have two cars? Look at me. I'm talking to you out there. Do you have two cars? Why do you have two cars? 
because your wife wants one. That's okay with me. Uh, you got two bathrooms? Remember when we only had one bathroom? How many of y'all remember that? Hold your hand up. Some of them you had to go outside. That was the only one you could get. It's called an outhouse, right? Two ba- whoa, whoa, you don't need two bathrooms. See how silly that is? If you understood my schedule, I got both of them running. I'm ready to go, buddy, to preach this glorious gospel. Delta wished they could fly me. Because when I quit flying Delta, they lost a ton of money. Mm. Mm. One time I took six people. I was going to fly, all fly in first class. I took them on my plane and I flew them. Watch this private aircraft. Ch- cheaper than Delta and American and United was charging per ticket. So I don't mind you having two bathrooms. You don't need them when you're in a bind. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It doesn't make any difference to me. He's saying it doesn't make any difference to God. Before I ask the answer. Now, to prepare myself for this, I have to type rate Ken. I have to type rate Eli. I have to send my mechanics to school, all the different things. And that's going to take a while to do it. And that's very expensive. I said, that's fine. But before you ask, I'll answer. So between, I had to get another tug. You know what I mean? That's another thing to pull real heavy jets with. That's 100000 Well, $97,000, something like that, or $94,000, whatever it is. See, then I had to get, what they call that thing, a mule? Hydraulic mule, that's $125,000. These things weigh tons, you see. I had to do that, so I, I was preparing myself. So, and, and where's Wendy? Wendy's in here. Wendy is my, she's right over there. She's my financial director. She knows more about my money than I know about my money. And Wendy ain't going to pay nothing unless I sign it or, or I approve it. So they, get, they handed me $225,000 worth of invoices when I was at my aviation office. So I put JD on them and uh, gave it to Martin, Martin, and he, he sent it over to Wendy. Am I correct when, it, when that works? Okay. Well, I come to find out, I spent almost a half a million dollars between type rating Ken and type rating him, and he, they got to go for 30 days. So not only do I have to pay $66,000 per person, but they got to eat for 30 days. I have 30 days in a hotel. Probably a car, too, I'm assuming, right? Uh, Got to have a, some kind of car. No, I, I, unless Ken wants to fast for 30 days to save me some money. <laughs> no, he ain't going to do that. He's going to eat well, praise God. And he wants to. I want, I want him to do that. My point is, is so I had about close to $495,000. When, when I signed the invoices, I found out that FedEx was supposed to deliver me something coming and it was but they wasn't going to do it till Monday but they told Fritz Fritz knows him real good he said well Fritz we have it here already now they didn't know what it was so Fritz picked it up and Harry and brought it there and watch this God so watch this now you ready for this maximum instead of minimum so I, I committed to about four hundred ninety five thousand dollars to prepare for this thing and when Fritz brought me the package it was just an envelope in of it it was a check for a million dollars. Before I ask. Before I asked. I didn't know I needed all that. Didn't know it. Not minimum. Man, so I'm going to take that other 500000 and put in all that. Kind of, there's other stuff that goes out there. Now I got to buy insurance. You know, all the different stuff that it takes to do all that. Then you, you, had, you hadn't flown one mile yet. And I didn't ask you for the money, did I? Mm. Before you ask means God has a message to deliver. Amen. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what he's saying. That's for all of us, not just me. That's for all of us. Write this down. The answer comes even when the prayer is just the thought. God answers, but when you have, it's just the thought. The prayer, the answer comes even when the prayer is just a thought. Just a thought. Think about that. 
Remember this, all the coal, all the gas, all the, I saw all in the ground waiting for somebody that needed this God that's always ahead and never behind, above and not beneath. You see what I'm saying? Before I could think, I didn't have time to ask God, would you help me with this extra 500, 495, you might as well say 500, that I didn't know I was going to have to need all that, you know, to produce this thing. And he said, oh, yeah, I already answered that. My God, my God. But you know what I'm doing with that million? Souls. Amen. Call the person that sent the million dollar check. I said, guess what? What? Between, what is today? This is September. Uh, I got it in August, at the end of August. Today is September, whatever it is. Before she gave it, when I got my report, I touched over a million people last month for the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, for Lord, for every dollar given to my ministry, give me a soul into the kingdom. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. So not only did we could take care of that stuff, and we had the finances to do that, but the problem is souls into the kingdom. And this person said, use it for whatever you want. I said, I'm going for souls. That's the reason for the jet. It's just that simple. Do you see what I'm saying? Rodney Hot Brown right now is about ready to take off doing, I think, a 10-nation thing uh, in Africa, and he rented an Airbus. Whoa. Airbus. You know, that's one of them big, big, uh, that, that is a commercial big thing, flying, and it got, they, there's a shower on it. So they said, well, you're going to get to the hotel? No, I'll be clean and ready to go. I mean, they, they drop me out, I'll go there and take it, and I'm going to the next nation. Before you ask, what does he want to bless y'all with? He's already got that. He's already answered it. Now, you know what I'm saying? Think about that. This wonderful God, who we serve and whose I am and who he is, Lord, is such a blessing. Before you think it, he provided it. Write this down. God is always more ready to answer than we are to pray or ask. He, he, he wants to answer us before we have time to even pray or ask. We should pray, we should ask. But he said, I'm ahead of you, man. I'm ahead of you. You see, I knew when Jody was born to me, she would never be hungry. I made sure there was formula. In those days, women would take shots and they'd drop their milk and their breast. They didn't do much breastfeeding. Hardly at all back then, you know what I'm saying? Then when Jody was born, she was born in 1971, and they would take shots to dry up their milk, whatever. That, but I, we always had Infamil, something like that. Yeah, funny how I remember that. Huh? And I would get so nervous because they were, full, they were full fluid ounces in them little jars, and Jody would pass out and fall asleep after she drank two, and I said, this kid's not eating enough. Wake her up, slap her a little bit, make her drink the rest of this. You know, I, we didn't do that, but I, I would bother me because you see, before she ever needed anything, dad had provided that. Yeah, it's a great example. You see, you do the same thing. That's why your refrigerator got food in it. That's why your kids don't think twice to go to the refrigerator, open it up, and even invite kids to eat your food. Eat, their friends will come over and eat each out of a house and a home. But you don't care, you know, because you mom, you dad. Before they ask. You know, mom, I already know you need some shoes for school. Uh, my, uh, I know. They already know. God already knows. God is always more ready to answer than we are to pray or ask. Write this down. An unanswered prayer should always set us upon examining ourselves. If something's not happening, we need to examine ourselves. Now, I'm going to talk about this for just a minute. I'm going to put something new in this. You should never, everybody look at me when I say that. Let me say the point so you, you're writing it down. Let me say it again. And then I'm going to say, God is always more ready. Uh, uh, excuse me, an unanswered prayer should always set us upon examining ourselves. Well, I'm not getting this. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, I didn't say this to my staff. You should never mix faith and time. It doesn't work. Faith is, only has one time. 
It's called now. The future is now. The past is now. Now faith is. See, time can be your friend or it can be your foe. And see, that's why a lot of people quit believing God. Well, bless God. See, Satan says, I can't defeat them in the faith realm. But if I can delay this thing, they'll quit praying, Candy. Let's do it with time. You should never mix time and faith because it's not mixable. It's like oil and water. It doesn't mix. Now, who don't want something yesterday? We're Americans, man. We created fast food. You understand? We want something done quickly. When you want a new dress, girls, when do you want it? When you want a new Louis Vuitton purse? Chanel? No. Escada? No. Givenchy? No. Gucci? No. Christian Dior? No. Look at the men. They think I'm speaking in tongues. Then women know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they know what I'm talking about. Yes. You want it now. And it's not, that's not greed to want something now because faith was made. Do you know that God will make you look at something and desire it so he can give it to you? You think you was by accident walking over to that jewelry store and saw something? God planned that. He didn't tell your husband. That's why he's nervous about it. But he planned it <laughs> so that you would ask. But before you could ask, he would answer. Amen. This God. Yes. I've had Catholic tell me, I don't know why I wanted that. I do. God. Looking. Who can I bless today? Who can I heal today? People say, why don't you get sick? I don't have time. He took my infirmity. Why do I want it? He bore my sickness. Why should I have it? And by his stripes. Oh, yeah, but you're getting older. So I may be getting older, but I'm not getting old. I went to get off a platform the other day, and a man grabbed my hand. I said, I can still walk. I'm all right. You know, they see this white hair. You know I said, I can walk. I got it. And sometimes I'll step on something and they think you know, I'll almost fall down or something like that. You know, just, what do you do? Get up. You see, you got to understand this is God. So people can say, well, you know, you're, well. and you know, if you think about New Orleans, we have the best food in the world, but it's not very healthy. But that's why we sing and shout at funerals because we had such a good time eating it when we died. <laughs> we have jazz funerals. <laughs> Why? Because they ate some Popeyes right before they died. <laughs> Love that chicken from Popeyes. I mean, just, we just do songs on it. <laughs> you never mix time and faith. Now, who don't want it yesterday? Nothing wrong with that. But see, so I don't even think about the time when God says, that's it. That's it. The world shall not return unto me void or him void. That's what he said. All the promises of God are what? Yes. Yea and amen, which means yes and so be it. See, so quit mixing the time with the things that you're believing for. Because if the minute you stop it, boom, you're going to have it. Yes. Your time can be your foe or you can be your friend. It just depends. You see, amen. write this down. Prayers are answered when we conform our desires to his will. Prayers are answered when we conform our desires to his will. You see, I don't mix time and faith. Let me go back to that. I've conformed my desires to his will. But, but I know what his will is. You want me to shock you? You want, me, you want somebody to write me an ugly letter? You know what his will is? Diamonds. He's been cooking them for billions of years in the ground so you could wear them. Gold. He made a sheep grow wool so you could have a wool suit. Or wool worsted. Should have been bested instead of worsted, but you know whatever that is. What? Always? He made those guitars before you ever wanted them. See, that's why your wife didn't understand that. He said, why do you want them guitars so much? And I understand that. Because see, so God could give it to him. Well, you only need one. That's true. It has nothing to do with need. Amen. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. <laughs> and that's what God said. I'm going to have to move on them to love something so I can give it to them. 
Do you see that? In every which way, shape, or form. But, but if, if you get in a hurry or you're dragging your feet one or the other, you start mixing that. You don't do that. That's why so many people say, oh, well, that faith message don't work, so I quit believing that. Because they mixed faith with time. And they should have never done that. Jesus is coming, ladies and gentlemen. When? Now. I hope I don't even finish this message. If I do, fine. If I don't, fine. It don't make no difference. I am just keep looking up. So if I go up, if you see this leg go up, that's hallelujah. You see this one go up, that's praise the Lord. If both of them go up, that's the rapture. And if you are not moving, enjoy yourself. When you leave, close the doors. That's all I can tell you. An unanswered prayer show should always set us upon examining ourselves. See, prayers are answered when we conform our desires to his will. The other day we wanted to go, I, I had been wanting to go to the Four Seasons, this new hotel downtown New Orleans. Uh, they bought the uh, International Trademark or whatever they did. They, they leased it or whatever, the International Trademark. Now watch this. The last time I was at that building was 53 years ago. Me and Kathy got married. She was 17, I was 20. And we went to the International Trademark downtown New Orleans and there was a call the Top of the Mark. They had like, anybody remember that? Yes. Yeah. It was, it was yes. circle. Yes. You could see all of New Orleans. And it was the only place they'd let Kathy in, even though we were married a couple of days, but we were married uh, because she was only 17. I was 20. So, and, I, I, and I've been here. People say they've been to the full scene. They liked it, you know, and, and uh, you ought to go to some of these restaurants. And I said, well, I, I like it. Well, whatever. One of these days I'll get there or something like that. We're going to make a long story short. I come walking in, and while we were driving over there, we went out and eat with Richie and Tammy and Greg and, and Carrie, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> I, come, I walked in, and there was we uh, front desk lady. I said, man, I hadn't been, no, there's the manager. I said, I hadn't been here in 53 years. He said, well, we're glad you're back. <laughs> he probably wasn't even born 53 years ago or something like that. You know, and it, but I didn't want to, I mean, I, I wanted to see what the rooms look like because when guests come now, we, we switch. We used to put them at the Hilton across from the airport. It's kind of going down. I don't mean that to be critical, just being true. Fix the place. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And, uh, and uh, so we, we were putting them there. So I said, I want to see, I want to see the room. He said, you want to see the room? Now, one guy looked at me and says, I said, you know, I said, I've just signed a big major thousands, thousands upon thousands of contract here for next year. You know, and they were, so they went and check it out, and they went, yeah, he had. So the manager comes out, and he said, I'll show you all the rooms. Now, what happened was, before I got there, I was thinking, well, I don't, I don't want to bother carrying Greg, or, yeah, but I'd like, maybe I can, while they're eating, I'll just get up and say, excuse me, I'm going to the bathroom, I'll go run and check a room out. <laughs> you know, just see what, he showed us the presidential suite. This one, when you walk into the bathroom, the lid comes up <laughs> and goes down. Kathy liked to have that thing, boy. So I was screaming, put that lid down, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know? And then he showed his two bedrooms. And I thought, oh, this is so nice. Before I asked, that man was doing that. Do you see that? It was a thought process. In my mind, before I ever verbalized it with my mouth. You see? And I got to look at everything. And we, had, we ate dinner then. It was nice. And we enjoyed ourselves. It was a blessing of God. And I had to fix something while I was there, too. I'm always doing ministry. So we got back out, and Richie, he, Richie and Tammy picked us up, and we met Greg and Carrie there, and they, 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 they valeted a car. And there was a nice gentleman there, and, you know, and he, uh, I'm sitting there, and you, you can't give him cash. You got to give him a card or something. I don't believe in a cashless society. Fight against that. Fight against that, because the government wants to know everything you got. Ain't none of their business what you got. Fight against that. If you go to a place that we don't take cash, say, somebody's going to take this money. Right. Is it you? <laughs> I promise you, they'll take the money. Yeah. Fight against that because they just want to control you. They're trying to get you to wear a mask again. They're trying to get you to do, let me get on this. They're trying to get you to do another, <laughs> another vaccine. Let me help you. There's no data. None. They bought 171 million doses. The pharmaceuticals have made $100 billion. Yes. The, and the finest doctors in America are saying, where's the data? There's no data. No, the flu shot. Now, we got 50 years of data on that. We know that works. 
They want to control you. Show me the data. If the data, then everybody get vaccinated. That's not the issue. But there's no data. Somebody making a ton of money. What's going on between the pharmaceuticals and the Biden administration? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. What's going on between China and us? What's happening here? Huh? Something is a happening here. We better learn to start listening here. America is us, not Washington, D.C. You see my point? Now, I believe in medicines. I believe in, I believe in all that. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not against that, but show me some data. See, they don't care. They'll shut it down again just to control you. And it shouldn't be. Now, I believe it. if there's something bad, we need to handle that. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not against that whatsoever at all. But show me some data. Don't flip-flop. If you get this, you'll not get the COVID. Everyone that got it, got it. You want data? Smallpox. They got enough data now that they actually eradicated the disease. You see my point? Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm, mm. You, you don't know what's happening out there. People do crazy things for money. They'll do, and they'll kill you for money. They will do that, ladies and gentlemen. Why? They don't know you, so what's the difference? That's sad, but true. Hmm. Write this down. When God notices goodwill making an appearance in us, when God notices goodwill making an appearance in us, he at once enlightens and encourages it and spurs it on. Now when he sees it, he goes, ooh, I'll make them love this so I can be a blessing to them spiritually, physically, or financially. Let me say it again. When God notices goodwill making an appearance in us, he at once enlightens and encourages it and spurs it on to be the blessing that you want to be in every which way, shape, or form. Yeah. I like being a blessing. Not only do I like it, I'm glad that I can be a blessing. They couldn't, they went and checked that contract that I signed with the Four Seasons. They found out that it's up there. And the guy said, whoo, that's a lot. I said, well, I, and Carrie loved it. I said, well, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, not, I, I'm not stupid getting rich. You know, I got rich and I'm not stupid. I know what to do with what I have. And I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded. Like sometimes I'll go buy a coat or something and they're trying to sell me what they want. I said, you must really love this coat. Won't you buy it? Why don't you like it? Because I don't like it. So why don't you go somewhere else? They're trying to sell you what they have. You didn't go there to get what they have. You go to get what you want. Do you see what I'm saying? It just makes, have you ever seen a car salesman trying to do that? They're just trying to sell you a car. When you know what you want. And I've said it so many times. Everybody, listen to me. This is great revelation. Never take no from a person who can't say yes. Yeah, somebody said, no, no, you can't have that. Wait, uh, can you say yes? You want to freak out the Chinese people in restaurants. You'll freak them out. It's when you add something to it. Say, I'd like to have a little extra bucket. No, 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 no. Uh, costs a lot of money. Well, how much it cost? 50 cents. I think I can handle it. They don't want you to break that. Uh, That's right. Whatever that dish says. <laughs> no, no, no. It's so like a lot of times Kathy will go to the, we like the seafood pot, and they have white beans and rice. Now, we like it. They always serve it with fried catfish, Rick. It's good. But Kathy likes fried shrimp. Well, now, I have blessed them, 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 them girls in there. I said, Kathy wants uh, uh, that white beans and rice, but she wants fried shrimp. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but if I wouldn't put nothing in that, in that jar, it's catfish. Well, how hard it is to fry a piece of fish and to fry a shrimp. 
I'm just asking for what I want, not for what you want. And a good restaurant knows how to handle that. One time we were at, at the Hilton Hawaiian Village, this is many years ago, in Honolulu, and there was this wonderful Chinese restaurant called the Golden Dragon. So we walked down, it's high dollar. I look around and I'm looking at some of this, and some of these are foods like sushi and stuff, I gotta be real careful. I, I, don't, I, I don't like to eat things that are moving. They're raw, what, what is this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't like a fish cooked with its head on and his eyes looking at me. Uh, cut the head off. <laughs> I don't like that fish head, you know. We go in there, so I'm looking around and a very expensive restaurant, classic. Remember that guy? It was a beautiful place, man. Watch this. That's why it was so good. So the waiter comes and says, hey, what would you like to have? Kathy saw something I think she liked or whatever. I said, I, I, I don't know. I just want something different. I said, I just don't see it. On, I don't see anything on this menu I really like. Just a minute, sir. We'd get the chef. Chef came by. He said, what can we cook for you? We'll fix anything you want. I said, Okay. I'd like to have this and that and this. He said, done. Anything else? I said, no, sir. He said, good. And it was a great meal. We go over to uh, England. And we, me and Kathy love soups. So we sit in this real nice place, Cam, sitting there, And they say, well, no, we don't have that soup. I said, well, the waiter noticed it. I, 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 I didn't say nothing. I went, oh, man. Just a minute, sir. Went all the way to the back. Here come the chef. He said, what kind of soup you want? I'll make it while you're here. I said, can you do that? He said, I can do anything. I'm the chef. He came back with that soup. I thought Kathy was going to lick the bowl. <laughs> it, was that, it was that good. It was, we're still talking about that soup. My God, man. See what I mean? And you know what? When I go back there, guess where I'm going? Why? Because before I ask, they're ready to move. To be the blessing that I want to be. Then I went to the man said, you like soul food, brother Jesse? Oh, I'm a soul man. <laughs> he said, you ever been to the Praline Connection? Yes. Anybody ever been to the Praline? I like the Praline Connection. Boy. So I went. This is when they were, one was on Esplanade. I don't know if that's still open over there. You know? Boy, and I said, oh, there's going to be some good food. And you can smell it. You know what I mean? And all, in, all black men with black a suit, uh, pant, uh, slacks, white shirts with a black hat. Looked like our, our guitar player. You know, got the black hat on, like that. And I said, uh, and they said, what would you like to have, sir? I think I'm the only white guy in the whole place. I said, I want to see you cook. <laughs> he said, what? I said, would you go get your cook? I want to see you cook. I heard this is great food. We have great food here. I said, can I see you cook? Ooh. Yes, sir. I said, I'll take care. I'll tip you real good. He goes out there. All of a sudden, here comes this black mama. She about 300 pounds. You can, feel, you can hear her legs scratching together as she walked. She said, what you want, little white boy? I said, we're going to have some good food. She tastes everything she eats. She goes, I said, ooh, this is going to be good. She said, you will never forget it. She walked around and she cooked. Good God, man. I ate so much, I almost got to the point of gluttony, but I stopped one bite from gluttony. <laughs> she came out, she said, what you think, little white man? <laughs> I said, ma'am, this stuff is great. She goes, yes. <laughs> Good food. I said, and so I gave her a tip. Oh, I've never had nobody do with that. I said, well, let me give you some more. What? Yeah, I said, girl, no wonder you got it. God, man, you are... You're an artist at this. It was such a blessing. And she appreciated that. I don't trust skinny cooks. Because they ain't tasting the food. But if you got a fat mama or a fat man, eat. Because you're going to enjoy yourself. <laughs> Why not? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm getting hungry now. I'm going to cancel this service right now and get out of here. Write this down. God not only graciously inspire, graciously inspire holy desires. Let me say it again. God not only graciously inspire holy desires, he arranges favorable moments in one's life. 
he'll arrange a favorable moment in one's life. Mm -hmm. I never forget years ago when Jody was three years old, we went to um, Niagara Falls. Now, I've seen the American Falls, but the real Niagara Falls is on the Canada side, the Horseshoe Falls. Anybody ever been there? Am I telling the truth? When you cross that river, good God, that Horseshoe Fall is just amazing. Well, Kathy said, now, I'm not a big prime rib person. Kathy likes prime rib. If, and I'm not a real big red meat, but I mean, I'll eat a steak once in a while. I'm a chicken person. Chickens see me, they have heart attacks because I'm going to eat them. I like chicken. I could eat chicken every day. I just love chicken, you know. But, uh, so she said, let's go to that restaurant. So here comes Jody, man. She's three years old, man, or two years old. It was a blessing. We go over there. And he said, this is a prime rib place. And I thought, and uh, Kathy loved prime rib. So I said, I said, you know, I, 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 let me go in a minute. I'm not a big prime rib person. He said, and this chef was there. He said, oh, you're going to like this. I said, you think so? Oh, no, sir, I don't think so. I know so. I said, he's pretty confident. I said, okay. He said, we're going to start you off with a piece of bread. I said, okay. He said, by the time you finish eating that, you'll kill the cow yourself with your mouth <laughs> before that prime rib ever hits here. I thought to myself, okay, this guy was ready. He comes out with a ball of bread. It's this big. And a big needle. Big, like a hypodermic needle. Needle is that long with... And the case of it, you know, I said, what are you going to do with that? He said, puts the bread down. He said, watch this. And he gives the bread a shot. And it's got Anjou in it. All the juices from, look at y'all kidding. <laughs> I see people. And he does it, and it makes it swirl in the, inside the bread. And I said, what are you doing? He said, vaccinating it. He said, now, don't cut it. He said, take it with your hand and bite it. I said, well, he said, everybody does it. That's how I bit. And, and when I bit down, juice filled my mouth. And bread, I went, where the cow? <laughs> I have never forgotten that place. That was the best I've eaten in my life. I just couldn't get over that. And I'm not a prime rib person. I'm really not. But buddy, that thing, man, it's a little bit too red. Look, it looks a little too raw for me, you know. He said, no, no, I can fix it where it's palatable. Just tell me what you want. What I don't like is when I go to Ruth Chris and they say, I'll say, uh, uh, how would you like your steak? Uh, medium, uh, medium. Do you know what medium? I was riding my tricycle for 30 years before you were born. I know what medium is. I know what medium well is. I know what medium rare is. I know what rare is. Yes. I don't like that. But they're worried about if they cook a steak wrong. You see what I'm saying? And uh, well, we can butterfly it. Nothing wrong with butterfly. But I prefer to have all the juices locked down inside of it. That's just me. Yes. Why am I getting on food so much? I don't know. <laughs> well, because I've been graciously inspired. That's what I said. That's my. That's, God not only graciously inspire holy desires, he arranges favorable moments in one's life. It became favorable to me. People say, how do you always make the right decision? But I follow the favor. Where, where the favor is. And I go toward that. I believe in preventive maintenance. Not only for stuff at my house, but me personally. I, I do exercise I don't like to do. Like a, Ricky was telling me, every year I have all my sewer lines at my house pressured out. I've never had to, never been plugged up. Plugged up one time, I thought, uh-uh, uh-uh. That man said, this man has the cleanest sewer lines I've ever seen in my life. Why? So I don't have that problem because you know it's going to happen when someone's spending the night. <laughs> they don't wait for you to be by yourself. Right? So they just did that. Did it. <laughs> and one time he said, these are the cleanest suit I've ever seen in my life. I, I, I make sure my air conditions are all maintenance. Everything. My car, maintenance. People love my truck. Every time I go with somebody wants to buy it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 12 years old. 
It looks like the dead come off the showroom floor. It's 12 years old, and it just turned 34,000 miles in 12 years. I just drive from here to the office, and I just love my truck every time. And it seemed like the brothers love my truck. Black guy, come here. Oh, you want to sell that truck? No, sir. Oh, man, I want to buy it. I said, well, you can't. It's not for sale. He said, man, I, th I think, when would you buy it? Man? He said, you must have just bought it last week. I said, it's 12 years old. 12 years old. Can I look inside? Yeah. But I take the keys with me. <laughs> now, they're going to steal it because they love that truck. It's a beautiful truck. That's just me. You know, I just like the truck. Cassie said, I'll buy you a new one. I said, thank you. I don't want a new one because they don't make this truck anymore. It's an RT. It's a, it's a Ram, uh, what they call that, the uh, Hemi engine Ram. It got 428 horsepower. I took a vet. I mean, I, I ate a vet's lunch. I sucked him up my exhaust pipe. He was so depressed. I shouldn't have done it, but the cops weren't around. I said, oh, you want to dance with me? You know, mm -mm. <laughs> I said, come on, big boy. He's thinking, this, the, I mean, I mean, he stomped that vet. It's on 310. Woo! I, I ate his lunch. And I slowed down. I was getting close to my eye too, so I could see him. He was like, yeah. <laughs> I said, you did good, baby. You did good. And I could hear this little engine going, mm. <laughs> just hit it, baby. So sometimes Ricky tells me, he said, listen, I'm going to fill you. Fill, I know what they do it. I'll fill your truck up with a gas. Hey, Jesse, can I, can I stomp it? <laughs> can I say, yeah, stomp that thing. I'm, you got to watch it. The tail end will come around you, boy. That thing, I think it, it's fast. Kathy wants to drive it. She will never drive it. <laughs> I don't want Kathy driving my truck. She, she has drove it before. She do it when I'm not home. <laughs> it's my truck. Yeah, I, I like to have one thing in my life that Kathy does. She wants to wear my watches. She wants to, Jody used to take my socks. Sometimes I tell both of them, I got some new underwear. Y'all want some? <laughs> Good God. <laughs> you know what? Get what you want. Jesse, you're not wearing that watch. That's mine. <laughs> Just leave my watch alone. Yeah, but, but I mean, you know, I said, no, no. You won't want to go buy it. No, no, I want, no, 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 no. That's not being selfish. <laughs> it's being selfish. <laughs> I guess you could tell. So I told her, I, I, I cut a deal with her. I said, oh, she said, oh, Jesse, I love that. I love that watch. I said, let me see if she's like God that before I ask, she'll answer. So I said, Kathy, you want to wear that watch? Oh, yeah. I have a Rolex Daytona African Safari with very few people in the world have with cognac sapphires, diamonds on. This thing is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. She said, ooh. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you that watch. But you know that big, beautiful ring that I brought you from Rothschilds? I don't want the mountain but I'll take the stone. <laughs> you can't take my ring. You can't take my watch. <laughs> See, I'm willing to give it to you. She said, I ain't giving it to me. <laughs> you want my stone? I bought the thing. She don't hardly ever wear it. It's gorgeous. I just take the stone out, and I'll find me a mountain. A mountain, not a mountain. A mount, with a mountain, whatever it is, and put it in there. Oh, no, 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 no. No. I said, well, just look at the watch. <laughs> See, I'm willing to be a blessing to this woman. And there's an altar call right here, Kathy, that you can come to <laughs> and <laughs> repent of your sins. <laughs> look at it. She said, I'm going to kill you tonight. I'm going to kill you tonight. This is funny, huh? But yeah, but you gave me that ring. I did. Yeah. What else you want? Come on, men, help me out, you bunch of chicken living guys. Y'all go. <laughs> I ain't touching that with a 10 foot pole. Let me get on this message real quick here. God not only graciously inspires holy desires, He arranges favorable moments in one's life. So when you understand that, He is looking just to be a blessing to you. Uh, not too long ago, Bobby and Gina and Rick and Debbie, they called and said, hey, we're having a fish fry. You want to come? I love fish. Yeah, yeah, we'll come. So, boy, we sat there, man, Rick is just frying the fish and all kinds of stuff. And Kathy says, oh, you got any rice? Rice. Most people eat fried fish and french fries. Kathy likes white rice. They prepared it ahead of time. They prepared it ahead of time. Yes. I know, Kathy. I know the story. I was there. 
And uh, so we, t- we tell uh, Rick, to take that piece of fried fish. As soon as it comes out the grease, stick it on that white rice. And let, you know, let the cholesterol get in the rice and you know, the grease where you just, you know, just enjoy yourself. We had a good time. We were enjoying ourselves. It's a blessing. It's a Cajun way of cooking, I guess you could say. You know. So when you understand that God has already done everything, even before you thought it, even before you ask it. So next time you thought you think you might get sick, it's a thought. The answer is by his stripes you were healed. And everybody else can get sick around you, but you ain't gonna get sick if you'll believe his word. I tried that, trying don't get nothing done. Doing does. So I didn't try to come to church, I did. You see what I'm saying? I got to go to Bogota, Colombia when I leave here. Fly over. We got to watch Cuba. Cuba. Because <laughs> I've been times I've been flying over there and Cuba calls our thing and say, do not deviate from your flight plan or we will shoot you down. That's a weird message to get when you're at so many thousand feet in the air. I'm telling you, and they're serious. Uh, this was years ago and I said, I had my Falcon 50. I said, we will not deviate. Well, this time now, Keith Moore's, uh, we both have the same kind of a jet. And he's flying two of them, so I'm going to fly with Keith. He's going to stop here in New Orleans, pick me up, and I'm going to give him the fuel. I said, I'll just top you off and all that kind of stuff, and we'll just fly. He said, and then when we come back, I guess you guys are going to pick me up in Florida. Am I right now? You know, so they don't have to come all the way back to New Orleans. We've got to go through customs and all those kind of different things like that. You know? and, uh, but he, he says, now, you know, uh, we've got to be careful about Cuba. I said, oh, yeah, I've been there. I, you know, and I'm telling you, they're serious as they can be about that. I had a friend of mine. Remember when they had Republic Airlines? Anybody remember that? I used to catch Republic Airlines from New Orleans to Monroe, Monroe to New Orleans. And I liked Republic Airlines. And I got to talking to a great pilot. This guy was really great. And he had, and Republic, uh, he had to fly to Cuba. Oh, it was supposed to go to Cuba. And they told him, you can't land. And he was out of fuel. He said, I have to land. If you do, we'll shoot your tires off. He said, well, you better start shooting. He landed that plane. They shot the tires off that thing. And he held it, got that thing on the runway. Tires bust, busted off like you, like you see on the road, you know, uh, pieces of tire. Bah, 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 bah. You got to have ice water in your veins to do that. They shot the tires off of it. But he saved the people on that plane. And thank God, I mean, he already, they already called the State Department and said, if you don't release these people, we're going to war here. Because they shot the literally tires. I mean, that's amazing, you know. This, this is when Fidel Castro was living. I don't think they do that, you know. But... but Every once in a while, you'll get a call. Do not deviate. So you don't. You know, and we fly all over the world. We, we fly in the perimeters that, God, that they tell us to fly and that, that we put our flight plan on to do that. I'm saying all that to say this. God has given you a delight plan. A want plan. A need plan. Just stay in the perimeters. And guess what? You'll have all you need. You'll have all your desire. You'll have all you wants, spiritually, physically, financially. You'll have a hard time dying because sickness won't be a part of your life. You'll just have to say when you're ready to go, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit, and out you go if that's what you want because death and life's in the power of your tongue. And they that love it, love what? Life or death. You want Deuteronomy? I put before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. That you and your seed may live, not just survive, live. You see, in every area of your life, spiritually, physically, and financially. Did you enjoy it this morning? Give Jesus a hand clap for that. I love that. Before you ask, I will answer. While you're talking, I'm here. I'll just tell you what happened to me. I'm about ready to receive our morning tithes and offerings. This happened, um, Pia, was that Thursday when that check came in? That man came to us? Thursday morning. I was feeling pretty good. I said, man, I need a little time off. I said, I think I'm going I'm to I'm 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 release the staff a, half a day early. That way they can have a nice Labor Day weekend. Yeah, boy, they all shout, man. Oh, glory to God, they just love all that, you know. And I still pale. <laughs> the Aquita, Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> she said, I've learned so much working for you. I said, oh, yeah. And even uh, Pia gave me a nice comment. She said, who does these things? I said, we don't know nobody does what Brother Jesse does. I, Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. And I, to make a long story short, I'm believing God for $6 billion. Oh, it's going to count. Ain't no other choice. You, you, you can say, you, 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 what? Seven low orbits, seven high orbits. 14 satellites, Rick. That we can preach the gospel anywhere in the world. And they can't take us off. Why? Because I own the satellites. And it's going to cost $100 million apiece to fly them up. That's okay. I don't care. He didn't ask me to pay for it. He asked me to believe for it. So watch this. So I didn't know. All of a sudden, when Pia starts running, I know something's up. Because Pia can run, son. Pia can flat take off. When she come run, and I, she's like, a, I said, what? <laughs> what? She said, um, I thought maybe you might want to, uh, 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 I have a check here. I said, a check? What, what are you talking about? She said, uh, there's a man, in the, in, in, he's in the foyer. You, you, you want to talk to him? I said, yeah, I'll talk to him. Now, you remember, I had on a T-shirt and shorts because I was going to take off the day. And I said, I'm going to give everybody else off too, and we'll have a little nice time. And she said, he gave $10,000 last year and got blessed with a million. He said, this man's anointing's on him. Yeah, that's on me. The anointing increase is on me. Well, when I, so I went down there, and I said, Peter, come with me, because you had talked to him. And he said, boy, but Jess, how you doing? He's in the uh, waste management business. I said, oh, how you doing, please? He said, well, I just want, you know, I, I like your satellite project. He said, here's a check for $100,000. Walking off the street, coming into my office with a $100,000 check. Last week was a million-dollar check. B, B. B I L L I. Not Benny and the Jets. No, Billion. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to take a dollar of it. I don't want that money. I want them satellites to preach this glorious gospel. Put all the preachers on for free. Charge the heathens. <laughs> well, the wealth of the center laid up for the just. I'm just being biblical. It's going to happen. Ain't no other. And, you know, trust me. If I didn't do it, the next person in the line is ministry will. Because this vision going, baby. But I'm believing God to do it. Think about that. That's $1.1 million over and above what comes into this ministry in one week. Why can't it be $1.1 billion? Why can't it be $1.1 trillion? There's no limits here. I'm dealing with a maximum God. Not a minimum. And before I ask, he'll answer. I know he's already spoke to somebody. I don't know who. I don't need to know. All I know that obedience will work. And if you be willing and obedient, I'm willing and I'm obedient. I eat the good of the land. Give Jesus a hand clap for this message. My Lord. Now, we're going to receive the morning tithe and offering for this ministry. It's a good ministry. It's totally debt-free. There's not a thing you can put your hand on in this ministry, on this campus, that we do not own. And when I say we, I'm talking about Jesse the Prince Ministry, Voice of the Covenant, Outreach Church, Voice of the Covenant, Inc. Church. We own, it's nothing. Like my man said, well, suppose, supposing you, you, all your partners quit you, and you, you'd have to get off and tell them, what would you do? Uh, rock. <laughs> Sit down in a rocking chair and just rock. To things get better because they can't take the buildings. It's all paid for. I'm believing God for everyone here and people know it that's been coming to come to church to be totally debt free and the amount of money that they were in debt have that in liquid finance in some bank somewhere so you could do whatever you want to do. The reason why I believe in tithing, some people don't. Well, that was under the law. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you Moses' son? Because he's the lawgiver. I learned this from Jody, my daughter. Bless me. Are you Moses' son? When God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, Candy, was your name on it? No. You're not Moses' son. You're Abraham's son. Did Abraham give tithe? Yes. Uh -huh. Before, the law. Before the law. You're not Moses' son. It ain't got anything to do with the law. That's right. It has to do with obedience. You don't want to, you don't have to. You don't even have to get saved. You don't want to get saved, don't get saved. You go to hell. But so, so I, see, I, I love New Orleans, but I don't like decadence weekend. Yes. Now, I'm not against anybody. I'm not, I, I hate sin. I don't hate the sinner. I, 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 
I mean, to me, a heterosexual doing sin is just as bad as a homosexual doing sin. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh-uh, 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 that's not my cup of tea. But you're not Moses' son. That's right. You're Abraham's seed. Amen. And he was a tither. Amen. And an offering giver. Yes. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yes. And you know why it's not about money? You've heard me say it here. Because God has never changed a rate. Mm. It's been 10% all these years. Right. Now, if it was about money, he changed the rate. The mortgage company changed the rate. The charge card, charge card companies change the rate, right? The banks change the rate. God hadn't changed the rate, so it's not about money. It's just about blessing. I'm the seed of Abraham, not the seed of Moses. You see, and besides, if you want New Testament, go over to Hebrews chapter 7, that Jesus is a high priest on the order of Melchizedek, and that high priest is still going on now as we speak. And he gave tithe to Melchizedek. Now he's Melchizedek. You give tithe to Tithe and offering. I mean, how many times we have to say this? Well, why am I not being blessed? Because you mixed time and faith. Get away from that time. And let faith do its job. And God will honor you. There's an offering I'm going to open the back of the pew. If you're giving your, uh, uh, your morning tithe and offerings to tithe, goes to help fun- function uh, a voice of the covenant church. Over and above giving goes to function JDM. JDM, and it's all really one bucket with two different names. It's called voice of the covenant church, DBA, doing business at Jesse the Planet's ministry, or AKA, AKA, also known as Jesse, whatever. It's all the same thing. So I'm gonna ask you to do your best. If you're giving today and you wanna give online, you can use the JDM website. And hit a select bump. It's up there on the screen. You can use PayPal. I don't know what that is. I still don't know what PayPal is, but a lot of people use it. You can text to give a one-time donation if you want, or a recurring one if you want. Or you can go to our mobile apps and give that way. Uh, or you can just write a check to Covenant Church that's on the back of the pew. I, I don't touch any of it. Am I right, uh, Wendy? I, am I telling the truth? I don't touch any of your money. I, 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 thank you, Holy Ghost. I don't need your money. I don't. I have no needs. I'll take a billion dollars for God's work. And I'll, I don't ask you to do something that I don't do myself. I'm looking for places to give. I found out that Maui needs some help, Lahaina. So I sent them $25,000. And I made sure that the people would get it. You know how people are. You know, remember Katrina? Yes. A lot of money went here, but the people didn't get it. Yeah. That ain't right. Some people going to stand in the judgment. The Lord's going to roll back the video to 2005, August the 29th. Yes. Yeah. And you received this and you would not bless the people. Yes. He don't forget some. He keeps the books. I ask you to do your best. We're believing God for the unbelievable, but impossible, yet doable things. Over and above giving. We're putting it toward the satellites. We're putting it toward everything we can. Kathy wants an event center. Just come up with it, just out the blue. Jesse? I go, what? We need an event center. I said, Kathy, that's going to cost five to six, seven million dollars. Jesse? We need an event center. Okay. I go to the aviation. Boss, we need another hangout. That's $5 million. Maybe a little more. Boss, boss, listen. You want, you, want, you want a mechanic shop, right? Yeah. It's not mine, it's God's. If I die, Jody don't get it. It doesn't belong to me. Nobody owns a church. It belongs to God Almighty. You give me $1,000. What is today? Sunday? I'll have a thousand people saved by Tuesday afternoon. I do it all the time. And I mean that pridefully. I'm reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. If you're writing a check out, you got it on the back pew. If you want to do that way, I ask you to do your best. Don't give me anything that doesn't belong. Uh, that if, if, if you go to a different church, you don't give me your church money. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Look at me, everybody. I'm going to look at the camera too. And if you don't want to give, you don't have to. 
We are going to function, baby. But this anointing of increase is on me. You know what that man gave me that hundred dollars? He said, I said, what are you believing for? Ten million. I got an opportunity to buy a huge company. And I don't know of anybody that works as fast as they do. And I've given, it's amazing. People think I'm just saying that to get their money. I never touch their money. Am I right? Wendy, I, I don't. I don't. I have my money. It's right here. I think it is. Yeah, here it is. That's my money. This I touch. Not yours. It's not mine. Get your offering ready. We're gonna we're gonna pray and ask God to bless it. Hold it up to the Lord. I want to pray over it. Ushers, get ready to receive it. Father, thank you today. Lord, let the hundredfold come today. The hundredfold, Jesus. Not a hundred times. That's uh, mathematics. We want maximum, Lord. Hundredfold. Lord, I decree and declare it today in the mighty name of Jesus that everybody will be blessed. So many people have given so much. And Lord, you know I make no distinction between big givers and small givers because they're all seed sowers. I ask you to bless each and every one of them. I thank you for that $20 million donor you told me is coming. I thank you for that. I, I do. Whether it be $21 million or one million, Twenty million. I don't know how you do it. That's fine with me. You know, Lord, that'll take care of Kathy's event center. That'll take care of that other hanger. Over and above. Ain't no time what else you want us to do. Yeah, there's about six churches I like to pay off. I already paid off so many of them. But I know some of them that can show you some help today. I just want to be a blessing, Lord. I thank you for it. Bless the people because they're the givers and the sowers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Ushers, go ahead and receive this morning tithe and offering today. And I thank each and every one of you uh, for giving today because you didn't have to. And don't be uncomfortable. If you don't want to give, you don't have to. But I'm going to tell you something, you miss an opportunity here. Don't miss these opportunities. Did you hear what I just said? I'm looking for other things to do. You know, when people hear me say that, they said, well, get a hold of Jesse the plant. He'll do that. Some of my spiritual sons said, hey, uh, some other minister, tell, you, tell your spiritual father to give, give us some money. I'm not your source. I'm not your source. But if God told me I would, it wouldn't make any difference to me. He just has to speak and I will hear and I will answer because I'm made in his image and in his likeness. Think about that. Before you even think it, that's amazing to me how God does that. You can have what you want, spiritually, physically, and financially. I pray every day, Lord, let me flow more in the Holy Ghost than I've ever flowed. Let me have more health than I've ever had, and more money to complete my destiny, to reach my destination. As far as me personally, I, I'm in good shape. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I just do whatever. One man told me, suppose you lost it all, but Jesse, what would you do? Look at me. Start over. If I did it once, I can do it again. I'll say this and then we'll, uh, well, in fact, stand to your feet. You've been sitting for a while. I met a wonderful, rich, rich, super rich lady. I was flying out of South Africa many years ago. And I'd never met, met this lady before. Kathy wasn't with me. I was in first class. And she says, what's your name? I said, my name is Jesse the Plant. Uh, Jesse, I am so disturbed. And she was from Atlanta. She said, I'm flying to Atlanta because we had to go from Johannesburg to Atlanta. Then I was going to take another flight. My plane was going to pick me up. At that time, I didn't have a plane to cross the ocean like I do now. And they bring me to New Orleans. I said, okay. I said, what's the problem? Man? She said, I went into the bush, the bush. She calls it the jungle, the bush. I went into the bush with my husband because he liked to hunt. And people stole $4 million of my jewelry. I said, well, that's bad. She said, it is. And I was so depressed. My husband's got to go do some contracts. So he took the Gulf Stream. He's flying over and I'm flying back. I was so mad. But he gave me a wonderful comforting statement. I said, well, what did he say to you? She said, honey, don't worry about it. If we can buy it once, we can buy it again. 
I said, well, I don't doubt he will do that. She said, I bet he'll surprise me when I get home, when he gets home. I thought, what a nice lady. Now, I had been telling Kathy, I'm tired of asking these stewardess and these flight attendants for more food. Kathy will say, uh, tell them to give us some more food. I said, Kathy, do you think I'm eating all this stuff? Why don't you ask them? I mean, you can ask them. No, I want you. I said, no, no, why don't you ask them? She said, I want, I, want, I want another piece of fish. Can I have some more ice cream? I, I, I said, no, just you ask them. I got enough. I don't want no more. I get, no, but, but I do it. So I was asking uh, Kathy, she was mad at me. Why don't you ask? I said, well, why don't you? Why do I have to ask all the time? I see people go, man, you must be hungry. Huh? No, and she's the one eating it all. You know what the lady says? She says, she says, Jesse. She said, tell him I'll ask for some more orange juice. I wanted to say, is your middle name Kathy? So I got her some more orange juice. They wasn't no more than 10 minutes later. They had caviar. She said, Jesse, ask for more caviar. I said, Lord, strike this woman with sleep. Let her go to bed. And I had, I mean, I waited on that woman all the way to Atlanta, which was 12 hours. Then she says this, Jesse, I'm going to take a nap. Wake me up. I said, and she put these blindfolds on. And she was gone. She's, and I thought, and it was on my mind. God, if I fall asleep and I don't wake her up, she's going to get mad. You know how you get something on your mind. You know? I, I couldn't sleep for the 12 hours. Finally, I tapped on the show, ma'am. Oh, thank you for waking me. I told it to Kathy. Well, you did it for her. Why don't you do it for me? I said, I understand, Kathy. I understand. I will no longer gripe about it. So I bought my own jet. <laughs> and if she wants something, she can go get it. <laughs> if she wants to get some more. It was just kind of funny. But I was just wanting to be a blessing to the lady. But it got in my mind. She wants me to wake her up. I don't know this woman from Adam. But that's, you know, they're going to put the lights on when they want you to wake up, you know, about an hour before you land, an hour and 15 minutes. But that don't bother her. She wants me to do that. So but I thought, okay, I have did it for one person. Kathy, why can't I do it for her? I don't need to know her. See what I'm saying? If God told me to go buy Elon Musk a car, who is the richest man in the world, I'd go buy him a car. I don't care how rich he is. I ain't got anything to do with this. It has to do with obedience. I'd probably buy him a Tesla. <laughs> Help his bottom line out, I guess. <laughs> it didn't make no difference to me. I don't care if you're rich or poor. Or middle class. If God tell me to do something, I just do it. So I want you to take this inside of you today. Because you probably have an extra day off tomorrow. Call a long weekend and say, Lord, and before you're going to get out, Lord, he's going to answer. So I'm telling everybody, stay in an urgency of expectation to receive. Take the person's hand next to you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every individual in this building today, that they're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in and blessed going out. Lord, I ask you to bless each and every person. If someone here today that doesn't know you, I ask you to save them right now. If someone is physically sick, heal their body. If someone is having a lack in their finances, Lord, let the, let the tsunami of blessing flow. They just gave, Lord. They just sowed seed. Lord, thank you for covenant church. Thank you, for Lord, that we want to be a blessing like you, that before, before anybody would say something, if you moved upon us to do it, we would do it just want to do what you want to do. I thank you for it. I believe you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Isn't that a blessing? Now, uh, 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 one more thing. Uh, Candy and Steve, what's the name of your ministry? Does she know? Okay, what's the name? Oh, you had the name of the ministry? We want to give y'all. Y'all gave us a seed. Well, you sang such a wonderful song. Hand it to her, Kathy. Put it in her hand. That's for you and Stephen to do whatever you want to do. That's such a blessing. Yeah, you know, just want to be a blessing. Let me tell you something, Candy. When our people start standing up while you're singing, you're doing good. I've had some people sing up there and ain't nobody stood up once. 
But they was enjoying your ministry. How you like fl- uh, uh, playing that big buzzard over? That's nice, huh? <laughs> I saw you going, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> hit all the big old keys and stuff like that. And that's a blessing. And Renee can play that thing too, man, I tell you. Yes. I, and, yes. I, you know what I want? I don't ask much. For, I don't hardly ever ask for much of nothing. I want, this is Kathy. She said, I want to get somebody saved at New Orleans Symphony. I want them to be a piano player. I would love to have someone come to this church and you do, and then they would play something on that big bosom of That's the first one ever painted white. That is an amazing instrument, that thing right there. Ooh, that's worth way more money than Steinway's. That thing is worth, that's, now it's become a piece of artwork, that thing right there. And, and I purchased it. And Mr. Pavarotti was coming to sing for me so his piano player could play that piano. And he passed away, he got sick. He was going to give me a free concert because of that piano. I didn't know he knew I had one. But Bosendorfer, you, when you buy a nine foot six Imperial Johann Strauss, they let everyone that has one in the world know you have one. The difference between this one, this is the first one ever painted white. All, of, all the other ones are ebony black or satin black. And his piano player wanted, wanted to play the thing. That's all. So I think about that. Pavarotti, and he went home to be with the Lord. So I believe he went to be with the Lord. I, I, I got to believe that. He, he had such an angelic voice. It was just amazing. So you have a wonderful Labor Day. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you love them. What, baby? You want clothes? Well, come on over here. You need a microphone? Yes. Yeah. I just want to say thank y'all so much for being here. And happy birthday, by the way. Okay. Spiritual birthday. Can I, can I walk off? You can walk off. Thank you. Give I him a great that. hand clap, please. <laughs> We haven't done this in quite some time, so let me just say thank you for everybody that's been watching online. We have 33 states and 21 nations. I'm not going to go off and list them all, but thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for being here. I just want to let you know today is the first Sunday of the month, so as we always do, we have Next Steps class. We have people that are coming to the church all the time. I know maybe some of you that are planning to be here and you you wouldn't have had to sign in, Pastor uh, uh, Joy is going to be there in the room for the Next Step class. It's there on the in the prayer room here to the side. So be sure you make your way there if you're brand new. I know God's bringing new people to the church all the time. Just takes about maybe 20 minutes to go through that. So you'll know the history, the beliefs, and the vision of Covenant Church. So let's everybody raise your hands. Let me pray a blessing as well on you. Father, I thank you that you've drawn these people here today, all of our congregation, as well as the visitors, Lord, and all those that are watching online. Bless them today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Be friendly. See you next Wednesday and Sunday. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.